Hello and welcome to the Miniatures Rundown. I'm Joshua. And I'm Mitchell. And there's no Sunday preview this week, to the surprise of nobody. Right. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the 10th edition core rules changes that we're most and least looking forward to. Mm -hmm. Brought to you by our blog. Did you know we have a blog? We do have a blog. It's GameTalkNetwork.com. Link in the description. Yep, if you're more of the reading type. So our friend at the blog, Dave, wrote up a nice little article for us, basically featuring all the changes, just kind of a nice rundown. Yep. So what we're going to talk about is what we like and what we don't like coming up in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the positives. Mitchell, what's the thing you're most looking forward to as far as new rules in 40k? Uh, definitely Battleshock. Battleshock. Mm -hmm. uh, now, this is just the very brief version. Battleshock test replaced the old morale check with several differences. Let's talk about those differences. Oh, yeah, because they're huge. It's yeah. one of the largest overall changes of the edition. Maybe one of the most impactful. Oh, yeah, definitely. So what's different? Uh, so first of all, leadership is no longer higher is better because mm -hmm. they wanted every other stat higher was better. So they made it so that uh, rather than your leadership being 10 is good, your leadership being 5 is good. Right. And you have to roll 2d6 and equal or beat your leadership if you are below half strength. So if it's 10-man unit, you go down to 5-man unit because they killed stuff. You get to make a battle shock test at the beginning of your next turn, a.k.a. the command phase. Yes. <clears throat> and that's very important because failing battle shock no longer makes people run away. Yeah. Which is, uh, so it's no longer a, a literally an attrition test. Right. Um, which is what it used to be called. It is now a battle shock, which means they basically become worried. Yeah, so um, you lose your ability to control objectives. Mm -hmm. your, your objective control stat, which is how much you count on objectives, is mm -hmm. gone yep. if you fail battle shock. If you have to fall back, which is running away from combat, you have to make a desperate escape, which basically means that's when you can suffer attrition. Yep. It is very similar to the previous attrition. Yes, and then finally, and perhaps most impactful of all, a battle shock unit cannot use stratagems yeah. or have, be affected by stratagems. And it, battle shock does last for until your next command phase. Correct. So you can't do it in your opponent's turn either is very big. Yes. That's huge. Mm -hmm. And now, um, like you said, this is triggered when it you know you drop below half strength. Mm -hmm. But there's also a bunch of other things that can trigger it. Yeah. Specifically, uh, well, from what we've seen so far, Tyranids do it a lot. Tyranids trigger it a lot. It's um, one of their... Just pure faction rules. One of their faction rules is Shadow in the Warp, which just says, hey, everybody, take a battle shock test. Mm -hmm. uh, so you could use it at the right time to really just cripple your entire opponent's army. Yep. Uh, we saw the, uh, oh, what are the incendiary marines? Oh, the, um, I don't remember. The, yeah, the, the flamethrower marines. The flamethrower marines from Leviathan. From Leviathan. Uh, also trigger. Uh, Screamer killer triggers. Uh, the Neuro Tyrant uh, gives an extra minus one to the Shadow on the Warp. There's a whole bunch of Battle Shock messing around. Space Marine Reavers now trigger this when they charge in and give a minus one <clears> still. <throat> yep. So there are lots of things that that trigger Battle Shock mm -hmm. and also things that mitigate it. So now the Tyranny of the Synapse, whereas before it was kind of eh, nowadays it does a lot more. It's and a lot of it is Battle Shock based. Super helpful. It really makes you want to keep in the bubbles, which again, it's... Rather than going, uh, I'll lose a couple guys, whatever. But if, if your gaunt unit gets knocked out and can't use uh, stratagems, can't hold a point, it's huge. Yeah. Which is probably why it's my favorite. It is much more impactful than Battleshock used to be. Yes, because morale... What happens is, as an addition goes on, morale tends to get less and less important. Yeah. Because they keep introducing more and more ways to ignore it. Mm -hmm. We'll see if they do that this time. There are already mm -hmm. some ways to ignore it, like Tyranids. Their synapse lets them roll 3d6 instead of 2d6. Right, but the trade-off is that generally their leadership is worse. And you have to be in synapse range. Yep. So that is also one of my favorite, I'm just going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Because uh, I, I also love Battleshock. But I also wanted to call out Overwatch changes. Overwatch. So previously... Overwatch was a stratagem, mm -hmm. cost one command point, mm -hmm. and you use it when you are selected as a charge target. Right. Before your opponent charges, you may choose to fire Overwatch at that opponent with the model that, or unit that is being charged, right. and you hit on sixes. Mm -hmm. That's how it works in ninth. In tenth, <clears throat> wow, is it completely different. It is way more open in multiple ways. Yeah. Uh, first off, you can still use it when you're charged, but you mm -hmm. use it after you've been charged. Yeah. Second off, you can also fire Overwatch... Anytime enemy units set up, so that means deep strike, yep. or reinforcements, or drop out of a Valkyrie, or anything like that, or if they make a normal advance or fallback move within your range, mm -hmm. which is like 24 inches. Target unit must be within 24 inches. I also believe it no longer just hits on sixes. 
no, it, it does hit on sixes, but there are more more things that I've seen that edit it. Yes. There's a couple of Space Marines that are like hits on fives. I think it's the servo turret can hit on fours. Right. It is still that it hits on sixes, but the fact that you can use it in way more situations and from further away, because it's 24 inches, mm -hmm. it's normal movements. It takes the place of, uh, what, what was it called when a Space Marine... If you drop near a space marine, they could shoot you. Oh, um, there was a couple things. Auspex scan. Auspex scan. Uh, Votan also had it. It takes care of that, but everybody gets it now. Yes. It is it is super nice. Uh, it does really lean into uh, the shooting aspect. Yes. if you're an all-melee army like a world leader, then obviously you Overwatch can. isn't going to work out for you. It's going to hurt you. Yes. But yeah, it's not quite reliable enough to completely deter multiple dropping in right but it does prevent some of the cheaper aspects of like oh i just drop a unit in and it's there and you can't do anything about it yep which was always kind of a feel bad yeah that's true uh now it's like oh you drop a unit in bang mm -hmm. you probably won't wipe it because you're only hitting on sixes sure. and some things are going to be better than others uh it leans into the control aspect mm -hmm. and this is something that is true of also a battle shock which is like there's more controlly aspects to 10th edition 40k Yes, which is a space that we haven't seen accessed in a while. And for those unfamiliar, what we mean by control, it's very often used in Magic the mm -hmm. Gathering, but also in video games. You know, crowd control is controlling lots of mobs in World of Warcraft in ways that isn't just killing them. Right. Because right now, in 40k, it's kill. Yep. You either have to kill really fast or be really tough or both. This leans into the idea of, like, affecting your opponent in ways that isn't just killing their models. And I really like that. I do, too. I think it's a really interesting space that uh, can be explored pretty deeply. Right. And it, it leans more into the idea of, like, okay, you know, suppressing fire or something. Mm -hmm. You don't have to kill things to affect them on a battlefield. Right. But in 40k, there's no line. Yeah. Now there is. You you take a unit down to half that's, like, still 30 inches away from you. You can take them to uh, objective control zero. Take that point away from them. Exactly. Or stop them from having that point at the start of the next turn. Yeah. If they don't have sticky objectives. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's one of the reasons why... Overwatch is one of my favorite, mm -hmm. uh, just because it, it kind of leans into that. Yeah, Battleshock probably still more impactful. Yes, I think battle. Like I said, like we said, Battleshock is one of the the biggest changes and most impactful changes of the edition, other than probably list building. Yes, which we'll, we'll get to. Which we will get to. Both of these things are are fantastic for for the new rules, and they're they're the things I'm looking forward to seeing how much they affect. I've been watching some battle reports already because people have been putting those out, and man, there's. Some big changes. This is going to feel like a very different game. Yeah. In the way that 8th to 9th didn't actually feel like that much of a different game. Right. Also worth noting, oh. Fire Overwatch can only be used once per turn, mm -hmm. not per phase. Mm -hmm. So if you use it in your opponent's movement phase when they drop somebody, you can't use it later if they charge you. That's true. Uh, now let's get to the ones we're maybe a little less excited about. Or trepidatious, maybe the better term? Trepid I like the word trepidatious, even though I don't know what it means. I don't, I'm, I'm <laughs> kidding. I know what it means. Worried is too strong. Worried is too strong. Um, well, maybe not for the one I'm going to pick, but trepidatious meaning like, eh, I don't know, man. Yeah. I, my, mine is, I want to see how it pans out. I, let's go with yours. Okay. We're going to go with mine first. Cause let's it's, go with yours first. My, my, I feel like mine is more long. -winded. Well, I have one and a half. One, okay. Number one is rerolls. Yeah. So here's what, here's the thing. Games Workshop was like, okay, we understand that rerolls are really prevalent because they're one of the ways to really buff up a unit. Mm -hmm. So we're removing rerolls. We're making them much harder to access. Mm -hmm. This was a lie. Uh, <laughs> we counted. There are so many things in Space Marines and Tyranids, just the data sheets we've seen, that have rerolls on them. Yeah, well, there's a lot of twin linked. Yeah, and that's the big one. So twin linked, which is a weapons keyword, mm -hmm. is on weapons that are twin linked. Mm -hmm. And you just get to reroll wound rolls. Yeah. The fact that it's all wound rolls. Yeah, is not wound really roll of one. Strong. Like full rerolls is really strong. Mm hmm. Uh, so you lost rerolls from captains, like and stuff like that. But there's still tons and tons of ways to get rerolls. Like they called yeah. out in the Space Marine article that Oath of Moment, which basically you pick one target to get full rerolls against, yeah. is supposed to be like, oh, that's how powerful it is because that's one of the only ways to get full rerolls. Twinling doesn't care. No, <laughs> Twinling doesn't care. There's reroll ones to hit just everywhere. Yeah, uh, there's Tyranids have it too. It's not just Marines. Yep. Yeah. There's like if something. You get reroll ones to hit, and if you're on an objective, it's reroll all all hits. There's lots of that. Tyranids has less of it. Yes, and uh, we have yet to see because it is still Sunday. That we have yet to see the other factions. So maybe I said this to Josh, and he he scoffed at me. Uh, maybe Marines are the exception. Maybe, but Marines comprise a huge chunk of the player base. So if Marines are the reroll faction, that means you still have lots of rerolls in 40k. That's true, 
but there's what 27 other factions i don't know 20 i guess i'm i'm counting space wolves and stuff like that so 20 which will still factions. have all those rerolls yeah i know 22 other factions that won't have all those rerolls maybe possibly <sighs> yeah i still it, it trepidatious again trepidatious we we will see but yeah the just the we could do a whole video on when GW says something and then is immediately <laughs> counter countered with that. Yeah. My second one was flying. Uh, flying used to be you just ignored vertical height. Mm. Now, flying, if you, you you measure verticality too, so you measure the diagonal when yeah. you fly. That's just such a pain in the butt. I I don't think it's a pain Here's in the, the butt. I, I like, like the idea of it, but it's such a pain to measure. Nah, it's and fine. not be like, oh, I'm angling a little, little differently, or oh, I'm only angling to the lip so I can get a little extra much. I just don't like that kind of corner case, super specific movement stuff. See, I feel like being able to completely ignore vertical movement was too strong. It was very strong, which is what I think they should have done is what they do in Necromunda for jet packs or mm. jump packs, which is you can move up to half of your horizontal distance as vertical distance for free. Yeah. Because that, A something that flies faster therefore jumps higher mm -hmm. which makes sense and b means you can f jump pretty high but not infinite movements so for example the winged tyranid prime here has a move of 12 mm -hmm. uh you can just measure diagonally here mm -hmm. but i would like if you could just that would mean he would ignore six inches of vertical movement mm -hmm. which is still a lot but also means he can't just leap over eight inch tall building yeah that's true that would have been what i liked but it, this is a very 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 minor yeah complaint my Number one worry is detachments. And not so much in the way that I don't like how they work. I don't like the way they are they were implemented and how they might be implemented in the future. Explain. So I like going from the sub factions into detachments where they're more generic. They are anybody can be in a, in any of the detachments and call it whatever sub faction they want. I like that. I like simplifying them because stacking rules on rules on rules is annoying. What I don't like is how much it took away from. I am a huge list builder. Mm -hmm. I don't like how much it took away from the choice to be made that each faction only gets one detachment and then you get more when the codexes come out. So that is the thing that I don't like is if I am see the problem is that space Marines is the exception because mm -hmm. they have space Marines and space wolves and blood angels and all that stuff. But if I want to be a Tyranid player, I have to play with the Tyranid uh, detachment. If I want to be a Necrons player, I have to play with the plus one to hit Necrons detachment. And yes, they are the generic ones. They are good for all plays, but like it doesn't give me any choice in the matter until a codex comes out and then there's the problem of codex creep yeah codex creep is the big one because <clears> if <throat> you get a bunch of different detachment choices and no one else has them yeah so you automatically have more choice which means probably one is going to be the best one and it will be a problem and that's that's what i'm worried about obviously we don't know how that's going to work which is why it's on the trepidation list and not the worry list but yeah that's that's the one thing that i'm worried about See, I kind of saw detachments as just, like, your army rules. But they're not, because there's an army rule. Right. That's <laughs> that's what is... The wording is confusing. Yeah. But currently, it's just, like, you have an army rule, but also a detachment rule. They... they yeah. So, currently, the detachments are just, in addition to your army rule, that's what you have. Right. And there's no sub-faction. Right. Quote, unquote. But when the book comes out, you will gain sub-factions. I'm happy with where it is currently, because I just... There was a lot of choice, but a lot of it was, like, false choice or mm -hmm. not particularly good choice. For most factions, it ended up being not a lot of choice. Yeah. It um, was, you know, Black Legion was the best one. With some exceptions towards the end. Yeah. Um, the Necrons were notable for being able to pick from a couple different sub-factions. That's true. And being pretty fun. Same with Jane Steeler cults. You, Jane could, Steeler cults. you could, like, focus on something and make it more interesting. But, like, if you're playing Imperial Guard, you played Born Soldiers. Yeah. And that was the only you thing. You always played Born Soldiers. Because it all was the, all the so other good players. compared to everything else. Yeah. That one also wasn't technically a sub faction um but it was the first look at how detachments worked now yes um which sort of yeah it's a little bit weird there, there there's like here is the one that's the main one and then the rest of them if you want to and maybe that's why mm. this doesn't bug me as much because i am a guard player so the idea of you have your army with your army rules mm -hmm. and you get to pick essentially one extra rule to apply to them yeah is normal to me that's true 
where I'm used to playing, you know, chaos based Marines where I can play Emperor's children or, you know, night Lords or whatever. That being said, the problem with that is, is that like, this would be as if you could only pick foreign soldiers, which is what currently you yeah. can only pick. So yeah, soldiers. they just give you no options, right? You have exactly born soldiers and nothing else until your book comes out, which I would be okay with. That's just what they were doing permanently. Mm -hmm. But the fact that there are going to be books that codex creep it, that's what I'm not okay with. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree. That's a, that's trepidation there. I was I was hoping there would be multiple detachments on in the index release. Yeah, I can kind of see why they didn't do that because it's more to balance. It is more that could go wrong. But on the other hand, it would have been nice. It would have been nice. Uh, so this is another thing that Games Workshop has talked a big game about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a big Games Workshop mm -hmm. about. Uh, you know, oh, we know Codex Creep is a thing. We've acknowledged it, so we're trying not to have that happen. And we get to wait six months to see whether they have their. I don't think we're going to have to wait six months. I think Marines and Tyranids are going to come out sooner than that. Okay. Three months, maybe? Probably three months. But anyway, we're going to have to wait a little while to see how bullcrap filled their mouth are <laughs> in, that, in that regard. Yeah. I got a funny feeling it's not going to be. Heck, yeah. looking at the Marines compared to the Tyranids right now, the two rule drops we've seen. I I think they're more balanced than it looks. They're and more especially balanced. since we haven't seen points yet. Right. Yeah. We got to see those <sighs> points. But, oh, man, Marines have a lot of rules. Yeah. I mean... More rules does not necessarily equal better. No. Historically. Yeah, historically maybe. it does. But... <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, do you have anything else that is on your trepidation list? Uh, no, I think that's it. I'm pretty hyped about the edition as a whole. I just want to see all of it. I want... I, I know the drip feed is, you know, good for the hype. Yep. But, man, I just want to see all of it. I gotta. I want to see those points. I want to I wanna fast forward to Friday. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, as somebody who, like, I don't love 9th edition... I started with 9th edition, and I have no love for it. See, I started in 5th edition, and with the exception of 6th edition, uh, have liked every edition since then more. Mm. Okay. I like 9th more than 8th, I like 8th more than 7th, and 5th edition was a you know, flaming hot mess, but it's the only thing I knew. <laughs> There's a lot of things in 9th edition where I like, especially compared to like Age of Sigmar, <clears throat> yeah. where I'm like teaching some of the rules and going, oh yeah, this is completely silly and makes absolutely no sense, but that's 40k! <laughs> I mean, and I feel like there's less of that, in general. Yeah. So overall, we are definitely hyped for tenth edition. Yes, and I'm hyped for Battle Shock and Overwatch, and a little worried about detachments and rerolls. Yeah. And I'll know it at flying. But you know, <laughs> you you play guard. You don't have a flying model in your faction other than a plane. A Valkyrie, yes. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Question mark. No, it is true. There are no other flying models. Okay. And it has twenty inch movement. You're not even gonna care. 20 plus. Yeah. It's about I mean, I'm assuming 20 plus. We don't we'll know. talk about flyers some more another time. Yeah. So that's it from us this week. Thanks again to Dave and our blog for writing the blog post, for which we use as a reference here. Yeah. Check uh, it out. We'll see you next Sunday when we, I mean, we'll see if they put up anything up for that. Yeah, that's true. Cause... Well, I mean, because that's going to be uh, not release week. It's going to be mid. So it would be the pre-orders for the release week of, uh, yes. I almost said uh, Indominus. Of uh, Leviathan, which I don't think they're going to put anything up. Probably not. Maybe the maybe the indexes. Yeah, they might maybe, put, maybe. maybe might put the index. And if they up. do put some indexes out, we will talk about them. Oh heck yeah! Until then, we'll see you next time. Bye bye.